What's up, YouTube? Yes. Well, if it would focus... What in the world is going on? Anyway, so we'll be, we're going to be shaving some eyebrows on this block. This is a, uh, a Briggs flathead. Um, I'm actually, I'm coming at you from a different location than usual. I'm actually inside my shop and, uh, I'm going to show y'all how I start my process on, uh, shaving down the brow. So, um, what I do is I lay a head gasket on top here and I basically trace out with, um, like a Sharpie or whatever you got. And, um, this is what I'm going to be knocking down. Um, what I do, I shave down into the bore. Because that is just a straight shelf, straight on top of the piston. Because you got to figure when the gas is coming in, the piston is not quite all the way at the top. So don't worry about that. People like to say, oh, well, if the piston's all the way up and, you know, you got you got this the eyebrow shaved, the piston is going to create a wall. Well, no, because the piston's still on its way up by the time the flow <clears throat> or the charge gets, gets on top of it. Um, anyway, that's my little two cents on that. Um, but I'm going to pause you out real quick. And I'm going to show you the tools that I use. Uh, I'll be right back. All right. So these are Dremel attachments. Um, this, these, this is what I use quite often. Focus now. Come on. Um, I, well, you get the idea. This is a, uh, I think it's a 60 grit uh, sanding barrel for a Dremel. And then uh, my second probably most used attachment is this one. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Of course not. Why would you want to focus? I'm trying to make a video. Stupid thing. You can see. Let me see if I can get it to zoom. Yeah, there you go. So... This is my second most used one. This is this is one of the this is the one I'll probably start with because I can remove the most material with this. Um, and then I got another one. This is another one I use quite a bit too, just because it's got a tapered point on it. And um, sorry for the focus. There it goes. See that tapered point on there? I can really get in there and get some precision done. And then I got this one. <clears throat> That's kind of the uh, tapered the opposite direction, so fat on the end, and then it narrows down toward the neck. I use this one. I mean, I use all three of these. It just depends on how it goes with the initial bulk removal, um, which I usually will do or start with this one to get kind of the pattern. Uh, sometimes I'll use one of these, but the the problem with these is the aluminum gets gummed up in them, and I just, you know, I ha it's got to be a real good reason for me to use that. But typically speaking, this is really all I need, all I use right here. So uh, let me let me hook up. And I'll be right back to you. All right. Old trusty Dremel. Dude, my camera just absolutely will not focus. The old trusty Dremel. Boy, I've had this thing for a while. And, uh, it, I mean, I like it. I like it a lot. Anyway. So, uh, hold on. Let me get a, let me, let me get a little vape toke here. So, like I said, if you're looking at this block... In this direction here, you see the you can see the black on there. That that black is what we are removing, and all the way down to if I were to pull this valve out of here, there's like a there's like a flat surface. So we're taking it down all the way to the top of the seat, all the way across. I'm doing something different this time. I usually will leave the middle. Excuse me, the middle part right here. I'll usually leave that like a ridge there, but um, <clears throat> I got to thinking about the flow pattern on the exhaust um, after combustion. Uh, it looks like it, it comes from this side over here. Let me back a little bit so you, so you can see. You got the boom, piston goes down, and then the valve opens, and it looks like the exhaust comes from this side. So I'm thinking that ridge is probably obstructing flow if I leave it there. So I'm going to try to remove it this time, um, see if my butt dyno uh, can react to it, but... Um, so let me, let me make the first couple of passes and I'll be back to you. All right, guys. So this is how I started. So, I mean, just the way I have to do it because the way I have to hold my Dremel is I come at it at this angle from this side of the block. 
and you just work your way around. Just, just work your way around. Um, these sanding barrels, uh, they remove material in a hurry. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't lose control of the Dremel because, uh, you know, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so now I'm going to switch my attention to this side. And uh, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll get back to you. All right, so you can kind of see how focus. Sorry, guys, I'm having so much trouble with this thing focusing. So you can kind of see how it looks now. <clears throat> so I switched around to this side because uh, this is where you can really, to me, this is where you really start to do the good shaping. So um, let me uh, let me get back at it, and uh, I'll get back to you guys. All right, so I'm going to switch over to uh, this bit <coughs> and uh, show you what that ends up looking like. Uh, I'm going to use it to shape up this area a little bit right here on the side and uh, maybe try to hog out some of this right here. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right, guys, a little update. You can see it kind of kind of taking shape here. And, um, yeah, I mean, you're just slow and steady. You just keep removing material one pass at a time. Don't get too carried away with it. Do not lose control of the Dremel at this point. So, but, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me wrap her up. All right, guys, so this is what you should be left with at this point. Jeez, my focus, dude. I'm, guys, I'm sorry. Um... I mean, that's basically it. I mean, you know, this is, you know, after you get done with these cutter bits like this, let me, let me bring one up here. I'll show you. Hold on. Where are you? See this cutter bit? Once you get done with those, because, I mean, these remove a lot of material really quick. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can really get your shape down with these. And um, after you're done with that, you know, and another pass with the barrel sander, you know, this is how it's going to look. And at this point, this is where I would take some 220 grit sandpaper and just sand it smooth. So uh, let me get some 220. I'll be back. Oh, yeah. So one more thing that I do. Um, see that? That's my 220 paper. I take a, a Q-tip like this and just uh, make a taco out of the end of that Q-tip right there. So let me get you back in focus here. So if I'm like doing right here, it makes it real easy to get that rounded part of the sandpaper down in there. And uh, you can make a real nice transition. See, I started doing it right here on this side. It already looks a lot better. But um, but that's, you know, that's what I do. So let me, let me proceed and I'll get back to you. All right. I mean, that's the idea, you know? Um, at this point, it's good to roll. Um, I mean, I still got some machining marks over here. I mean, that it does appeal to my OCD side, so I probably will end up getting that out of there. But um, at this point in time, I mean, yeah, God, dude, I cannot get any kind of focus to go on. Goodness gracious. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to make a quality video here, and my phone is just not letting it happen. But, <clears throat> will you focus right there, please? No? Oh, well. Guys, I don't know if this video is going to be any good at all. You know, I just thought I would document this, at least, and, uh, you know, show you how I do it and how quickly it can be done. I mean, this video, I mean, this video is going to be 10 minutes long, but... You know, you get the idea of the pausing and stuff. It's probably been 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But anyway, guys, you know, um, I'm going to do some more things to it, and I'll video those as long as I go. So feel free to subscribe for future. Thanks, guys.